Hey, C Max here. Welcome to the What To Why To Non Reloader Reloading Series, video number 10. All right, well, we finally finished up uh, making the cartridges with the uh, roll crimping of the 38s. Um, this will probably be the last of the original installments on this series. Um, we're going to talk about work bench, you know, loading bench, workspace, that kind of thing, because, you know, I hear a lot of people are like, well, I, I don't, you know, I don't have a lot of room to do it. Um, what I basically wanted to do is show you what I have and show you some other options. So first of all, this is what I have. And as you can see, I put it up on cinder blocks to get the height I wanted. I attached it to the wall. Um, You'll also notice in my workspace there where the scale is, I put a shelf attached to the wall, not to the bench, just so that would help uh, keep any vibrations and everything away from the scale. But this is a Harbor Freight. Boom! Here's the latest ad I saw for this. This is the exact same thing. But I did do um, one thing different. I got a three-quarter inch plywood top for it instead of it being five feet i made it six feet so it's another foot longer than the way it came plus it had the holes in it for the the pegs over there to like hold a project on it and i didn't want those because i wasn't going to use it for that um it, it also what i did on the uh the top is i put 10 coats of polyurethane on it just to protect the wood so it wouldn't absorb anything um, did it for function, not for looks. Now, this is when I first started learning about versatility. I had mentioned that up on the powder drop up there, I'd put it on a piece of wood so that I could move it around to give me versatility. Well, one thing I've come to find out is versatility is huge. Um, you need to really plan around the versatility and keep all your options open. You know, when I first looked at the, at the bench, I was like, well, I don't need those drawers. And this right here is actually a wood vise. And I'm like, I almost didn't even put that uh, on there when I installed everything. But I'm really glad that I did now for several reasons. Uh, the 4x4 uh lead press that we were looking at early on in the series this one here i put and lock it in this wood vise right here or i take a c-clamp and i attach it to a wooden tv tray so versatility is a huge thing uh, I had all these three mounted at one time, but this one was down on the left and I had to work it and it was awkward for me and I didn't like it. So I finally got the plate system from inline fabrication. Expense I didn't really want, but now I'm glad I have it because I could even buy more presses and make them all work really well. Uh, the plates allow you to change them, take them off. I want it totally open. The carriers over there, let's see if I'm not looking through the viewfinder. The docking station, which is right there, you know, you can move them around. I also have another one over here on this side. Come on around. right behind over there. You can't really see it from this cam camera angle. So I've got three positions, so I could totally take them off the, off the bench and make it open. So the versatility is huge. Um, keep that in mind. You don't need a lot of space. This is really not a lot of space, but I can rotate all kinds of different presses through it. Whatever I need to do, it's perfect. So you don't need a lot of space. You know, and even if, well, AC Max, I don't have that much space. Um, we're gonna go and look at, look at some pictures here in a minute, but I did want to show this. The old Black & Decker Workmate. Uh, you can turn that into a loading bench. Uh, I see, I have seen people take a hall closet 
on the shelves and put the different things on the shelf. We're going to look at some of those pictures in a little while. So if space you think is an issue, it's really not. Just a little bit of planning, some smart, efficient things. You can do a lot in a very small, small space. Let's look at some of those pictures now. Okay, here's some with that uh, uh, workmate I was showing you. Here's another one somebody did. You can put a new top on them. They fold up out of the way. Somebody built a little cabinet to go uh, on top of it for a shelf. There it is folded up. So that's definitely not much space. Here's another one with just a flat top that they added to it. Uh, here's one in a closet. You know, it just doesn't really take a lot of space. Looks like they took a bookcase and uh, made it out of that. And Here's one that somebody made off a plank and just put it inside. Looks like a van. Top of a toolbox. Looks like a little baker's block or a little butcher block stand. Just built a box to set on top of a counter. Another one in the closet. Here's one they did out of a file cabinet. Just need to find a sturdy file cabinet. Uh, just a little block base they made, not very big. A little cubby hole one. It's got the lock and load. Here's one that's, uh, I think that's like a grinder stand that you can make and set the press on. That's basically just a shelf that they put it on. Uh, here's another one, basically a closet. It's got a little stool there. So, you know, it doesn't take a lot of space. It's just be a little bit, in, uh, you know, with uh, some ingenuity. Go on Google Reloading Benches. Click on Images, and just you're going to get all kinds of ideas. So, you know, take what you can. Works really well. So space is not an excuse. Okay, well, as you can see from the pictures, uh, you don't have to have a lot of space. You don't have to have a lot of equipment. You don't have to throw a bunch of money into it unless you want to, to reload. I hope these series has shown you that uh, it's not that difficult uh, and can be quite rewarding. I uh, also want you to know reloading will make you a better shooter. Whether it's only through having more ammunition, getting more trigger pulls, or just in the understanding uh, more of ammunition, which will uh, in itself uh, help you shoot better. I, I honestly believe that a vast majority of people who enjoy shooting would also enjoy reloading. It's just that they haven't had the luxury of having someone right next to them to show them how to do it through the power of YouTube. I think that's been addressed as well, so hopefully uh, some people will uh, go ahead and take the plunge, you know, if they've been thinking about it. Uh, I've reconfigured my bench here just to show you. Uh, I've got the lock and load press now on the right-hand corner and have the other two presses over the docking station on the left. Uh, I moved all those in well under 45 seconds, so it's just that easy, that quick. Uh, just to show you there again the versatility that, that I was talking about. We're going to wrap up the regular series. I do invite questions. You should have some other questions if I've done a good job. Please email me at cmaxarms at gmail.com uh, with those questions. Uh, I'll cut other videos. Uh, you know, I did not cover everything. There's just no way. So I'd like to address those now. If you just leave your question in the comments, sometimes YouTube tells me, sometimes it doesn't. If you email me, I'll get the response uh, much quicker. I want to do a shout out to four channels that uh, I typically um, will I follow. And if I have any questions, uh, they're my go-to guys. They're all very approachable and they're in no particular order. The first one is going to be 76 High Boy Reloading. He has Buku videos. Uh, the only problem with his side is he's got so many videos, you just kind of have to hunt for what you're looking for. But he goes through and shows you how to set up and operate almost every type of uh, brand of press and type of press out there. Um, all these people are very approachable, so you can ask some questions. I would recommend that you go sub them. I'll put links to all these down in the description. 
Uh, the second one is the reloader dude. Um, does lots of stuff. He's got Redding turret and Dylan stuff, and he shoots competition. He has a, a little bit different take on things. Uh, the third one, Elvis Ammo. Uh, he does lots of experiments and and whatnot, and uh, you know, go check him out as well. And the last, but certainly not least, is Fortune Cookie Forty Five LC. Uh, the gentleman's been doing casting and reloading and such, and he is a plethora of knowledge. And uh, as I said, they're all very approachable. So if you have a question, you know, feel free to contact them. Uh, and Elvis and Fortune Cookie, they've been the leading force in the new powder coating of cast bullets. Uh, we briefly touched on it where you had to lube and resize cast bullets and this type of thing. Well, they've eliminated a lot of that with the new powder coating. Uh, and they've been premier forces in getting that done and it's turned out to be a game changer in cast bullets. So that's also something that you can look at uh, you know, look into in the future to really cut your cost on reloading. All right, well, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like this series so other people can, can find it out on the web. If you think it's helped, please tell anyone about it. I do sure do appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot. Y'all have a great day. Looking forward to your questions.